It's my very great honor to present the Britannia Award for Excellence in Television to Damien Lewis. What lovely words. Um, given that the man who stood here in this same spot last year receiving this same award for excellence in TV was the legendary Dick Van Dyke, <laughs> I feel the only response to this to get things going is, um, core blimey, Mary Poppins. <laughs> excellence in TV. What does it all mean? Um, I can tell you right now, it wasn't always excellent. When I was uh, training at drama school, we craved screen acting classes, and they were in short supply. We had little or no camera technique training of any kind. And then one day, our principal came down, and he said, we're going to get you this nice man from the BBC. And he's going to come down and he's going to teach you screen acting techniques. And we all got very excited and we talked about it in the corridors and we huddled together and we thought, it's fantastic, this man's coming from the BBC, he's going to teach us how to act on camera. This is great. And this man arrived and he was absolutely lovely. And sure, he was a director from the BBC, but we learnt that he was a director of radio. And so my first classes in screen acting were given to me by a man who directed radio. <laughs> Which might explain the slow start. <laughs> I then got a job. I got five lines in a drama called Rick Mail Presents. <laughs> and I was still at drama school. I was very excited. I was very nervous, and I was on set, and I was acting away with Rick and the other actors. And then the director came up to me, and he said, Damien, now it's time for your coverage. I thought, what the f*** is coverage? <laughs> Before I could blink, the DP had stuck a camera on top of a dolly, put a dolly on top of a track. He said, you stand there in the middle of the track. Action. I stood there, like a rabbit in headlines as this thing came towards me, pushing in, pushing in, pushing in, I said, thought to myself, don't panic, don't panic, say your line. It got right up to it, about three inches of my face. I thought, bugger this, and I jumped out the way. <laughs> Shaky beginnings. <laughs> Slow start. We had to learn on the job. We were not taught screen acting, particularly at our schools. Um, so you can imagine my delight when I lit upon the great Sir Michael Caine's masterclass in screen acting. <laughs> and in it, Sir Michael gives this piece of advice. You always only look at the... <laughs> wait for it. You always only look at the eye closest to camera. <laughs> and you never blink. <laughs> Think about it. You always look at the eye closest to camera. And you never blink. <laughs> now, it's good advice. It's solid advice, but it's not without its problems. <laughs> My first three years as a professional actor on the TV, I played every scene like this. <laughs> no dialogue was safe. <laughs> I love you. Do you want to come down the pub for a pint? <laughs> Mum, we're out of toilet roll. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing was safe, but I didn't blink. Because Sir Michael told me not to. 
This evening, of course, is the most excellent evening. Um, it is BAFTA represented here in LA. And it's not lost on me, and I imagine one or two others, that of course, as a British actor, I have benefited from the gifts of American TV. And when we started making Band of Brothers, uh, which was 18, 19 years ago now, we had no idea, of course, that we were in the vanguard of a shifting landscape in TV, but we were. And I've always felt a huge debt of gratitude and a great sense of good fortune that I was coming of age just at a time when TV was shifting into a, a brave new world. And my gratitude to this day is, is canyon deep. The TV train left the station, Band of Brothers, perhaps The Sopranos, you might argue, was right there in the front car as it careered off down the tracks into a shifting landscape of intricate storytelling and complex characters. Um, and for the first time, production values with real cinematic qualities. Um, and I was just very, very lucky to be in place at the right time. That's how I see it. And I feel very, very fortunate. Of course, there was no guarantee of success. There was no promise of success that everything would work out. Um, when I was cast as Major Richard Winters in Band of Brothers, my friend Captain Dale Dye and the uh, military expert who's advised on everything from Band of Brothers to Platoon and back and everything else, when asked why I was cast in Band of Brothers, just said, I don't know. I don't know. But there's something in that ginger shit's eyes. I'm just delighted that one or two other people recognize something in that ginger shit's eyes. And I also worked at NBC Universal on a production called Life, which was short-lived but was brilliant. And I'd like to say thank you to them and to HBO. Uh, my biggest thank you, though, is reserved for Showtime and for David Nevins, who's sitting here with me tonight, um, who, allowed me, who allowed me to play in both Homeland and Billions. Um, I'm only sorry they haven't been bigger successes for you, David, but uh, if you keep trying, you will land a big one soon. You must stick at it, David. Um, of course, there were British shows as well that I was very proud of, The Foresight Saga and um, Wolf Hall and, and Warriors, which Matthew mentioned, where is where I met Matthew. And Matthew doesn't get a chance to talk about himself tonight, thank God. But he won the BAFTA for Best Male Performance in Warriors that year. Um, so I'd like to say thank you, really, to Matthew for being here. Matthew, it's just so much nicer having a good pal be here and share this lunacy with me. Um, thank you so very much. We have known each other 20 years now. Um, and if you haven't watched Succession, watch it. Um, sorry, David, that's on the other side. I'm so sorry. I said, must party line, party line. Um, uh, I'd like to say thank you as well to the people who've been on that train with me, uh, people who got on at the first stop right here in LA, Brian and Annette, who are here with me tonight, and Carl, who's not here with me, and um, Stephanie and Alex and Pippa, who actually uh, have been with me since the train left the station. I'm really enjoying my train metaphor. Um, <laughs> since the train left the station, um, when they found me in a student production of Macbeth wearing uh, dodgy 80s leather. Um, you know the look. Think Lionel Richie. Uh, we were pretty much all dressed like that. It was quite worrying. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my mum and dad, my beautiful mum, who came to the set of Band of Brothers and met Stephen, met Tom, was tickled pink about this. Her son, frankly, had any sort of job. Um, um, but, uh, but very sadly, didn't, didn't get to see Band of Brothers. Mum, 
I, I love you. Um, and um, also my, my dad, who's really responsible for all of this shenanigans, this acting malarkey, he uh, took us to the theatre constantly when we were children, and he should really be an actor himself. Dad, I love you too. And my love, Helen, who is... Uh, who's not here, and I said, come on, babes, you can just come out for a night, get a day off filming. She's in Manchester, and her voice dropped alarmingly deeply, and she said, Damien, nobody messes with the peaky f***ing blinders. <laughs> so she's not here. But I'd like to say a big thank you to Britannia Awards and to BAFTA. It's, of course, ridiculous that we all get to do what we enjoy doing so much. Um, and in the words of the great Dick Van Dyke again, I do what I likes and I likes what I do. <laughs> <laughs>